Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Now, in the last episode of this series, we've built a regular transistor-based Slayer Exciter circuit. Now, while the regular transistor-based Slayer Exciter circuit is a good circuit by all means, and in fact it's a great versatile beginner circuit, it's got some major limitations. Primarily to do with the fact that it uses a regular bijunction transistor to drive the actual circuit. Now, bijunction transistors, they're good, they're cheap, and they work. Problem with bijunction transistors is, on average, they have a lower current than a MOSFET, at which they can work. This means that a regular bijunction transistor, on average, is capable of delivering less output power than your run-of-the-mill MOSFET. Now, sure, you could argue that I can use, let's say, two transistors in parallel, or a larger transistor. Problem is, bijunction transistors are current-driven devices. And because of this, for a higher, so let's say, if you want more current to pass, through the transistor, you're going to need more current on the base of the transistor. Now, this leads to inefficiencies and heating, and generally is a pain in the ass, and might even require dedicated driving circuitry beyond a certain point. The aim of a good circuit is to be simple, as well as being reliable. The simpler the circuit, the less points of failure, and the less points of failure, the lower your odds are of releasing the magic smoke and having an epic failure. Pretty self-explanatory. For this reason, we're going to be using a MOSFET. Now, a MOSFET, unlike a transistor, is a voltage-driven device, meaning that it needs pretty much no current on the gate of the MOSFET to turn on and off. Which also means that, as a general rule, they can switch faster and are better suited for driving higher power radio frequency loads, such as a somewhat medium power um, Tesla coil, solid state Tesla coil that is. So without much ado, let's analyze how the circuit before us works. Whew, so the circuit itself is pretty similar to the regular Slayer Exciter circuit, with the key difference being it uses a MOSFET. Now what happens is, the potentiometer biases the, actually sets the voltage on the gates of the MOSFET to somewhere around the threshold voltage at which the MOSFET turns on. The turning on of the MOSFET allows a current to pass through L1. A change in current flowing through L1 with a primary coil induces a changing magnetic flux. The changing magnetic flux results in a changing current through our secondary coil, L2. This change in current results in a change in voltage. As MOSFETs are voltage-driven devices, there will be a change in the voltage on the gates, specifically a negative voltage, turning the MOSFET off. Now, it's important to make an, a, a distinction over here. Unlike transistors, MOSFETs don't particularly mind a somewhat small negative voltage on the gate of the transistor. In fact, uh, some driver circuits actually utilize a slightly negative voltage on the gate of the MOSFET in order to allow for faster switching times. So actually this improves the efficiency that we get a slight negative voltage on the gates of the MOSFET. However, we don't want the negative voltage to swing too low, so our diode D1 quenches those negative spikes to whatever the forward voltage of this diode is. It is also worth noting that diode D1 is a Zener diode, and MOSFETs unfortunately have somewhat of a double-edged sword when it comes to the voltage. On the one hand, they don't particularly mind a negative voltage on the gate. However, MOSFETs are killed by a high voltage on the gate and they are extremely sensitive to voltages, let's say, above the maximum voltage on the gate. So in my case, I'm using an NZF 04N60ZG MOSFET. I believe it's rated for 30 volts maximum, 
So if anything goes above 30 volts, well, the MOSFET's done. You release the magic smoke. And actually, the problem with the MOSFETs is that oftentimes, unlike transistors, they fail short. And if a transistor fails short, then it's going to let a lot of current flow through it. Because keep in mind, the resistance of a MOSFET, the internal resistance in the on state, is much lower than the on resistance of a regular bijunction transistor. So this can lead to some complications. In order to avoid these issues, diode D1, the Zener diode, it quenches the positive voltage swings to whatever the threshold voltage is. In my case, I'm using a 12 volt Zener diode. Although this can be pretty much any value, that is, let's say, below the threshold, actually the maximum gate voltage on the MOSFET, while being below no way. It should the maximum zener voltage of this diode should be below the uh, maximum gate voltage, but it should be around two times larger than the threshold voltage for the gate. So in my case, the threshold voltage for the gate is six. Sorry, three volts. So it should be above. 6 volts and let's say below 30 volts. So 12 volts Zener voltage fits in perfectly, like a charm. Now the potentiometer it's here to set the biasing voltage and yeah, not much more. Pretty much any potentiometer within reason should work. Although as a general rule higher values are better. Now C1 it's the transient smoothing capacitor. In my case, I'll be using a 0.47 microfarad uh, plastic capacitor, but any half-decent capacitor with a value of above 0.22 microfarads, which will be made of polypropylene, should work just fine. And last but not least, R2 and D2, this is just an indicator. They're not even really needed for the circuit to operate per se, but they help greatly in diagnosing power and jumper connection problems because they illuminate whenever the circuit is on. Now, R2 will be using a 2K2 resistor and my diode D2 I'll be using a regular 5mm CAN diode. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now that we know how the circuit works, let's go about building the circuit. In order to build the circuit, we're going to need the following parts. Firstly, we're going to need some sort of medium in which we can assemble the circuit, such as this breadboard over here. It's a medium-sized breadboard, nothing fancy. Any reasonable breadboard, perf board, or whatever board should do just fine. Next up, we're going to need a smoothing capacitor for the high-frequency ripple. I'm using a 0.47 microfarad 100 volts uh, WEMA capacitor, it's a polypropylene capacitor for pulses. Any polypropylene or plastic capacitor should work just fine for this purpose, preferably with a value larger than 0.22 microfarads. Next up, we're going to need the actual MOSFET. Now, for this, pretty much any fast, medium to low gate capacitance and channel MOSFET, at least for this configuration, should work. In my case, I'm using the rather fancy NZF 04N60ZG and channel MOSFET. Although your run-of-the-mill IRF 530 or IRF whatever something should work just fine for this. This is the Zener diode D1, which I'm using for my circuit. Now, this Zener diode, again, can be any reasonable diode with a breakdown voltage higher than at least two times the nominal voltage or the turn-on voltage of the transi transistor M1. Next up, this is the R1, the 10 ohm safety resistor for the gate of the transistor. Also, we're going to need a potentiometer. Now, as a MOSFET is a voltage control device, 
Pretty much any potentiometer should work just fine for this. In my case, I'm using a 2 kilo ohm, 200 ohm potentiometer, which is rated at a quarter watt. Next up, we're going to need our R2 for the LED. Now, R2 can be pretty much any value. In my case, I'm using a 2200 ohm resistor with a golden band, so that's 15% tolerance. And last but not least, any normal operating LED within reason should work just fine as an indicator for the power. And if everything is assembled correctly, the circuit should look like this on the breadboard. So this is the transistor, and this is the voltage indicator, and then this is the primary coil, this is the secondary coil return, and this is the power supply. So yeah, now let's go about testing the circuit. Three, two, one. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now that we know how the circuit works, what parts are needed to build the circuit, and we have it assembled, let's turn on the circuit and see what it's capable of. Now first things first, before we turn on the circuit, I have removed the MOSFET in order to first adjust the gate voltage. So as you can see, my oscilloscope probe, this green wire over here, is connected to the gate of the MOSFET, which is connected to this potentiometer. Now right now, the positive terminal of the battery is not connected to the positive rail. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the positive terminal of the battery to the positive rail. So let's do that right now. Alright, so now what we're going to measure is we're going to adjust the potentiometer until the voltage on the base of the transistor is around the threshold voltage. In my case it's 4-ish, 3-ish volts. So as you can see, right now the voltage is at 4.2 volts, which is pretty comfy and about where it should be. So let's disconnect the battery again and let's insert our MOSFET. Now the reason I'm doing this is because if the voltage is too high, actually too much current will flow and you can kill these flimsy wires in a breadboard. So one good way to protect against this is to use a light bulb in series with a circuit like this to prevent overcurrent. But that overcomplicates things and remember, we want to stay simple. So yeah, now let's turn on the circuit again. Okay, circuit is on. Now as you can see, there's a beautiful waveform right there. So it's 1.2 megahertz and there's about 8 volts peak to peak. So perfectly safe and the resonance frequency of my coil, 1.2 MHz, is smack banging on. The waveform looks a bit not very sinusoidal-ish, but it's not that big a deal. Now, let's bring the Nixie tube next to the secondary coil, and let's see what the circuit is capable of. So the Nixie tube ignites from about... Mm, about 20 centimeters? At 12 volts, that's pretty good. There is no voltage on the on the transistor's flange, that's also good. Let's see if we can pull an arc. So I'm going to zoom in onto the exposed wire. Come on, focus. Alright, that's kind of focused. Hey, will you look at that? That was just freely shooting off an arc. So yeah, with a rounded terminal, just free air to air breakout, that's that's pretty good actually. It's pretty good for a circuit. Definitely more power than the little Slayer Exciter was giving us. Alright kids, now let's test the circuit from 24 volt supply. So my 24 volt supply is just two 12 volt lipos connected together. Now I've set the potentiometer 
to effectively a short to the negative rail, so the voltage on the gates of the MOSFET will be zero. Additionally, I've inserted the safety bulb, because this is the region where things might begin to fail, as my potentiometer is rated at about a quarter watt, and this is actually about the voltage at which the power dissipation across that potentiometer will be in this region. So if we want to push the circuit higher, we're going to need a higher potentiometer, a higher value potentiometer that is, with the same power. But enough chit chat, let's turn on the circuit and I'll see what it's capable of. So let's connect the positive terminal through the bulb to the positive of the battery. Alright, that should be connected. Well, Alright, so right now the voltage on the gate of the MOSFET is zero volts. Let's slowly start turning up the voltage. Let me just give you a good view of that. Hmm. Alright kids, if the voltage isn't rising, make sure to check your connections, because we've just got a loose connection, so hold on. There we go. See, this is what the indicator is for. Alright, take two. Okie dokie, bulb is igniting. Oh, well, you look at that. That's a hell of a lot better than the transistor slayer slayer. I mean, look at that, it's going bananas. Let's pull an arc. So I'm pulling about one centimeter, so that's 30 kilovolts. This is really good. And I'm getting about. 30 centimeters of separation now, where the Nixie tube still glows. So yeah, I mean, there you have it. The transistor, MOSFET transistor base layer exciter. And the waveform is beautiful. So yeah, here's another close-up. So yeah. Next step, we're going to push the circuit harder. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Take care, and see you next time.